Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the weekly chart of silver provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. Now let me explain the lines that I've drawn here. This main line that I've drawn, this is not a trend line because uh, trend lines usually draw from support or from resistance. This is more of an average price trend line. This gives you the trend in silver starting from the very bottom and beginning of the bull market in 2003. So you can see that uh, this trend line was crossed to the downside a number of times, then uh, had a big run up in 2008, and then crossed again for a big uh, loss in the financial crisis. You can see that it recovered right up until the end of 2010 with the QE announcement when the Fed began changing its policy. Now, up until that point, the Fed had targeted interest rates. It was at that point that the Federal Reserve policy of targeting only interest rates um, and uh, just trying to reflate things with interest rates failed and that was the beginning of qualitative easing. QE essentially means money printing. That means that the Federal Reserve has had to resort to printing money out of nothing to buy government debt. That's a complete change in policy from all historical precedents and that's why you see this explosion in price in the price of silver. So uh, there's a correction back to that trend line. Most of us thought that when we reached that trend line uh, average price that we would have uh, pretty much had most of the correction over with we can see very clearly with a price of 18.68 that uh, we have had a massive correction below that now you can see with this other trend line that is drawn in parallel we're right about at the oversold rate that we were back in 2008 now I posted a chart on the blog today about the oversold percentage that we've reached, we've actually reached 62% from top to bottom. Uh, this uh, bear, mini bear in the bull was 60%. So we're now, we've now exceeded that. Uh, so I've drawn a trend line, or I'm sorry, I've drawn a resistance line and support line from the top of the 2006 peak and you can see that's coming in around $15. So that's going to be the next target on the downside if we reach it. Um, if we reach that, we're going to be looking at some serious fireworks here uh, because that's going to be probably a folding up and ending of the entire system. But we'll have to wait and see on that one. Now the other one is the trend line on the MACD. You can see that there's a massive divergence that begins at the very... Uh, heart of the financial crisis. We have this uptrend parallel line in silver. We have a downtrend line in the MACD to this oversold point that we're at, which is the most oversold since 1995. Now, I wanted to talk about the fundamental value of silver. We have a lot of people throwing in the towel. I think the saying uh, was Baron von Rothschild said, the time to buy is when blood is running in the streets. I don't know if blood is running in the streets right now. It probably is in the precious metals markets. But uh, I want to take a look at the inflation adjusted price of silver to give you an idea of where we're actually at on a fundamental basis. So let's go over to the more research chart. You can see that our price high now, the price spike of 1979 is not actually on this chart because this is going to be a monthly so uh, the price spike was so rapid we'd have to be more granular but it did get very near fifty dollars so I'm going to use that fifty dollar price as uh, as a benchmark so the thing we want to look at is uh, before we go to the actual inflation um, statistics I want to show you an article this is front page right now on Yahoo and uh, this is uh, Jeff Mackey Jeff Mackey is the one who interviewed Don Harold 
at the uh, May Smackdown of Silver, and now he's interviewing Dicker, and Dicker says that gold is unsafe at any price. <laughs> so the uh, media shills are out in full force, so we want to find out why Dan Dicker says that gold is unsafe at any price. And uh, so let's read a little bit of this. The retail investors are scared for good reasons. Gold is an investment that should have worked when the inflation, which was supposed to run rampant due to currency devaluation, kicked into high gear. As the inflation thesis gets debunked, gold is getting mercilessly hammered. So this is what they want you to believe. They want you to believe there isn't any inflation. So let's look at the inflation that they're talking about. Now, let me just give you as kind of an overview. Uh, this is a series of charts about price inflation from Free Bullion Investment Guide dot com. And you can see we have a picture here of the gas price in the 70s. We had 50 cents, a uh, dollar 79 in the early 2000s, and over four dollars. Now we backed off a little bit with their uh, rigging that they're doing. Oil hasn't come down, but uh, they brought gas down, and uh, they tend to do that when they're trying to run their little deflation scare. So I expect that uh, gas is going to spike back up again. But look, let's look at some of these others. Here's the medium income. Of course, it's uh, nearly parabolic. Here's the price of milk. You can see it was uh, under a dollar in the 70s. It's now 350. Bread was uh, per loaf. It was 30 cents a loaf back in the 70s. So. Uh, now it's nearly a dollar fifty. That's about a five-fold. New homes, 1970, you could actually get a new home for twenty-something thousand. Uh, now we're at two hundred forty. So there's a ten-fold move right there. Uh, new car, uh, the 70s. This one shows a uh, price of five and a half thousand dollars, and we're talking twenty-six thousand. So that's a five-fold move. Gas prices, here's the price of stamps. We've got about a fourfold move. Movies, about a fourfold move. So that's just kind of an anecdotal look at that. But let's get more granular and look at the actual inflation statistics. Now, what I did here with the price of silver is I took the high, the spike high that we had in 1979, and this is from John Williams shadow stats now if you want to get the actual figure the shadow stats figure you have to subscribe so I encourage you to subscribe to his service but I'm just going to use the guesstimate on this so you can see that in a main May 1979 silver price of 50 bucks that's the top uh, if we use just the BLS statistics and I've compared this to the Minneapolis Fed one it comes roughly 160 Silver price top was inflation adjusted uh, about 163 bucks. Uh, if we go out further and use shadow stats, then uh, just a guesstimate is going to be about fourfold. So you're talking about a $600 price high for silver. So at the current price of silver, at we'll just say 18 and a half bucks. I did the math earlier, so I'm not going to do it, but if we look at the price decline for silver based on the BLS number, we're talking about silver is down 88% from its BLS inflation adjusted high. And if we use the shadow stats figure, silver is down 97% from its inflation adjusted high. So that is is a phenomenal number. There are very, very few markets that you can find that are down 97%. But that's what we're looking at when we're looking at silver. I've shown you that their inflation figures aren't accurate. They're trying to convince you that uh, inflation doesn't exist. Of course, inflation has been steady in everything except for the precious metals. And of course, 
that's the way you protect yourself from inflation so that's why they're trying to uh, suppress those and quite successfully up until this point suppress those prices to convince you there is no inflation of course we know there's inflation so I'd like to buy a new car and here's a link from wiki answers and it is the question what was the average cost of a new car in 1979 and the answer is that uh, the average price of a new car in 1979 was four to six thousand dollars with some being a little over three thousand dollars so if you wanted to get your uh, drive from point A to point B work sort of car back in that time you could have gotten one for three thousand dollars now if we do the inflation adjustment just from the BLS then if new cars had performed the way that silver has uh, just on the BLS stats you would be able to buy a new car today for a thousand dollars boy wouldn't you love to buy a little putt-putt car that could get you from uh, to work and back for a thousand dollars try to find a new car less than fifteen thousand dollars today so that's the state that we're in we have price inflation but they're trying to convince you that gold and silver are unsafe they're not a safe place to keep your money because they fall in value but uh, we know that uh, even though they're up in a bull market that is still continuing they're definitely very very undervalued in terms of inflation so I did pick up some silver today I don't know if I picked the bottom I definitely like to buy on very very big smackdowns that's the best time to buy it doesn't mean that it's the bottom but it could be the bottom um, the last time I bought was around 22 so this is a very good stacking opportunity for people who still believe in physical silver now apparently a lot of people have lost their faith I've actually heard anecdotally some people talking about that they went and sold everything they had and went back into cash and my question would be to first of all to those people who say that uh, silver's in a bear market and therefore uh, that uh, you should sell out it's not a safe investment uh, my first question would be when is silver low enough in price to become a fundamental value and my second question would be if you're not going to invest in silver where are you going to put your money I don't think they can answer that question because obviously the only answer is going to be uh, even though silver's down 97 percent from its shadow stats 1979 inflation adjusted high they're gonna tell you well it's gonna go a little bit lower so you shouldn't buy and uh, the other one is that uh, they're going to answer that uh, they're still bearish and uh, they, they think it's going to go lower. So there's never going to be a time when they're going to tell you that it's a time to buy, even though a lot of them said that if it ever hits this price, they'll buy. You see today that they're bearish again. So I guess they're expecting a zero price. Now, I wanted to take you over to Atmex. I like to watch it very carefully when and uh, just wanted to mention that uh, some people have accused me of being a salesman for Atmex. I wish Atmex would pay me commission for all the silver that I've sold on their site or, or been involved with having people buy, but uh, I don't have any arrangement with Atmex. And as far as I know, Atmex doesn't do any affiliate sales. So. Uh, the reason why I cover Atmex so much is because Atmex is the main supplier of Perth Mint, which is my favorite uh, for the last few years, and uh, you really just can't get any. I definitely look at Gainesville uh, very often. I look at Provident, but for the most part, they're almost always sold out of just about everything that they have, and if they do have anything when I check at max they have lower prices so I always like to go to the coins and then rate them prices low to high I did that again the coins I picked up I didn't pick up these 2013 half ounce koalas 
I think that's a great price. You're looking at about 25 to 26 bucks an ounce. That's still a decent premium over spot because you're talking about the half ounce. I prefer the half ounce because those coins tend to rocket up in price once they're no longer available. But uh, the new coin that I saw today that I've never seen before, I don't know if Atmex just got these in, and I've never liked any kind of colorized coins. I just really don't like colorized coins because it kind of goes against the idea of investing in silver. Silver is very bright and shiny and uh, it, it has a luster and it's valuable and uh, something that people like in and of itself. But when I saw these coins going for less, you can see they're actually going less, going for less than any of the others. The 2012, that's the same coin right there from the same year. You can see they're going for 2871 and they have 188 of those left. They're out of the 2011. But these colorized coins, they have 2009 of those left and you can pick them up for 25 to 26 dollars. Yes, that is a decent premium above spot. We're talking about five or six dollars, maybe seven dollars. So that's pretty steep, but I would say looking at all the competition that's out there, that seems to be a pretty decent buy. So I'm certainly not going to recommend anything because I don't recommend coins, but I am watching these to see if I want to pick some of these up. And that would be the first time I've ever picked up anything colorized. So back to the chart. We know that uh, silver is oversold on many counts. It's oversold based upon these parallel trend channels. We can see that based on the trend channel, it's as oversold as it was in 2008. What is fascinating about this time is that we haven't seen a similar reaction in the financial markets. We haven't seen certain houses go under. Uh, and if silver continues to fall to this $15 level, will we see the financial collapse start that began the last time we had this with the Bear Stearns collapse all the way into the Lehman collapse and then the financial crisis. But based on that, silver is oversold and also based on inflation adjusted prices. Just on the nominal price, silver is 60% oversold based on the CPI price that the government puts out. Silver is 88% oversold from its all-time high. And based on shadow stats statistics, silver is oversold 97% from its all-time high. So if this isn't an undervalued asset, then I don't know what is. And we'll talk to you next time.